And instead of the smoke being on the outside of the car, it was in the driver's footwell. Days after my horrible wreck in my BMW Z4, I'm riding around in the car with Tyler Hoover, and he says, casually, why don't we go swing by EuroAsian Bob's, see what he's got. So we swing by, unannounced, Bob, happy to see us. He shows us a little of this, a little of that, but he takes us around the back to the cars that aren't necessarily for sale area of Bob's lot, and I see a Volvo V70R wagon. Of course, if you know cars, this is the kind of the wagon that got away. There's a, there's a few wagons that people are like, oh, okay, that's the fast one. You know, the E63 Mercedes, the CTSV Cadillacs. This one was a little before their time kind of shared the spotlight with them, but nobody ever really was, was nuts about them. They're really cool though. And here one was. But the kicker was this one had the manual transmission, which is called the space ball, because instead of a shift boot, they just made a smooth plastic ball and just like that car's claim to fame. Tyler's even like, what's the deal with this? I remember this being okay a few years ago. Of course, Bob explains what happened to it. The car was ready to be sold at some point, And then one evening, wheel thieves came by, stole just two of the wheels off the wagon. One thing led to another and just that's where it sat. It just sat there with two, less two wheels for quite some time. And Bob kind of says, well, it's actually funny. I was just beginning to tear back into this car like, and, and get it going again. I actually don't know what it's like. It's been sitting here for years. I just got these two new wheels. You know, if, if everything goes well, I'll start kind of fixing it back up. But here's the thing. It still had been sitting in that exact spot for three years-ish. And boy, did it look like it. But Bob said, I don't even know if it starts. And uh, I was like, man, I mean, well, let's say it does start. What would you sell it for? He threw me a number and I was like, hmm, well, you know, I was leaving for a trip. I said, I'll tell you what, you know, if this thing can drive itself out of here, I'll buy it for that much. Fast forward a couple of weeks. Of course, I'm looking into them. Tyler's not helping matters by going, oh, do you know what these are worth in good condition? And showing me, you know, listings and previous sales being like, dude, that's a crazy price. I get a call from Bob and he says, I, th I threw a battery in it. You won't believe it, the car starts and it runs beautifully. Amazing, he sends me videos. He even took it out on the street and, and drove it. And I was like, oh. And he said, you know what? I'm kicking myself, but I'm sticking to the number I gave you with this knowledge, which of course, you know, Bob, excellent salesman. But at the time I'm like, man, what guy? <laughs> that's awesome, you know, like that's, that's great. So I get back, I go first thing, I go pick up the car from Bob and I drove it home. On the way home, it was, it was apparent that the car had been sitting just from the brief drive. It had a pretty bad misfire um, at anything more than like 2000 RPMs, but easily remedied, I thought. This thing's plugs, filters, coils away from being amazing. And so I bring it onto the channel, kind of thinking, look, I'm excited about it, but I don't really know what my audience is gonna think. I do the first video on, you know, I bought this, you know, cheap rare Volvo wagon. You know, here it is, here's what I'm, I'm dealing with. and. People loved it. I mean, I had the added benefit of you know people coming in from Tyler's video, but what I did not know was that there was this sleeper cell of Volvo enthusiasts that I didn't know existed. I knew the people that loved them, loved them, but so does every brand of car. BMW guys love their BMWs, or actually BMW guys hate their BMWs, <laughs> but uh, you know, Mercedes guys, every brand has their own little core group, but the Volvo enthusiast group continues to surprise me to this day. It, it wasn't like your normal group. When something breaks on your BMW and you share it on the forums, everyone just kind of goes, LOL, that sucks. Me too, welcome to the club. The Volvo community, however, was wanting me to fix it and they're like willing this car into existence with positivity. So now I've got this car that I was excited about, undoubtedly, but definitely kind of being like, who cares about a wagon kind of a, a mentality. And it turns out a lot of people care about the wagon, which then, made me care about the wagon. So I set about repairing it. One of the things beyond the mechanical deal, which of course plugs, coils, filters, woke that thing right up, started driving perfectly. The electronics, not so much, but as far as the power, it was there. 
I mean, it's an all wheel drive, 300 horsepower, five cylinder turbo wagon with a manual. It's awesome. However, I noticed upon driving it one or two days, if you gave it the boost and you let off, it would go and let out a smoke screen behind it. And I was like, oh, and I mean, it, enough to where it caught my eye in the rear view mirror being like, oh, geez. Of course, the Volvo community goes, that's your PCV system. I did the major Volvo things that everybody was freaking out about, the timing belt and water pump. So mechanically, this thing's pretty solid minus the PCV system. However, the electronics were always kind of funny. Now the dash tells you some things are wrong, but I mean, it's a highly used car. Of course, it's got, it's mad about something. Here I am stoked that mechanically the car is, is back on track. I made the mistake of doing the PCV system and the electricals at the exact same time. Because my thinking was, I've already got the car pretty much apart. Why don't I repair this computer and replace these amps and the yaw sensor and all this stuff. And when I turn this car back on, I'm gonna have a smoke-free, electronically happy Volvo. What happened was, I put the key in and instead of the smoke being on the outside of the car, it was in the driver's footwell, electronically. <laughs> the smell of burnt electronics and smoke came into the driver's footwell. I immediately took out the key and ran and disconnected the battery. I'm like, okay, what happened? The car just started fine a second ago. What's going on? Couldn't figure it out. There were no singed wires, nothing visually failed, but I go to start it again after a thorough inspection of everything, no fuses blown go to start it again. It does start, but now I have no electronics whatsoever, no gauges, no windows, nothing, but it, it starts. And I had like power steering. It was, I was like, okay, it's pretty weird. Maybe this is one of those, you know, the electronics need to get to know each other again, kind of a things, because I just did replace a very central computer in it. So I, uh, I took the risk of taking it around the block like that, not realizing I also didn't have brake lights, turn signals or anything else. I quickly found out that the electronics were so toasted in the car that I also couldn't put it in reverse because the car has an electronic reverse lockout. And because I had nothing, I couldn't put it in reverse. So I always had somebody who had to get out and, and give me a push so that way I could actually finagle it out of the warehouse. Took it around the block, powers down naturally, and it stalls out on the street. It miraculously restarts itself, but anyway, push it back into the shop. I'm devastated. I just spent a lot of money and a lot of time, and I was on the verge of being like, I've got a complete car here minus some paint. What ended up happening was I have a car that is way worse than even the day I bought it. I had to put the car up on those little wheel dollies just so I could move it around. Because at this point, it's like, I don't know if it's gonna start. I don't like leaving it connected to the battery for fear of an electrical fire, and I can't put it in reverse. Come to find out, and of course the Volvo community was very helpful with this, the sunroof in the car a very, is a very vulnerable spot for water, as it is on a lot of European cars, but what had happened on mine, due to the length of time it sat outside and the absolute failure of the seals around that sunroof, was that the car basically flooded itself. It was not in standing water, but rain and rain and rain made standing water happen inside the cabin and then kind of sealed it up in there. I had heard that water leaked into the car and the dealership even said, you know, water might have been in here at some point. Uh, now that I've really dug into it and uh, taken the passenger seat out and stuff, you could see on the amplifier that there had been standing water underneath it. And now my electronic issues are starting to make a little bit more sense. Of course, I learned this after spending the money to, to re replace and fix these things. And now I have a, you know, a, a stranded car, <laughs> albeit at least it's in the warehouse. But another testament to the Volvo community was that I'd already spent the money sending this computer off to the only people in the world who are willing to fix it. I fried it, or it fried itself, and I sent it back to them for warranty repair. They did cover it and send it back. But I was like, boy, I haven't changed anything. If I plug this back in, it's going to do that again. I mean, it, I just have a feeling. <laughs> And they emailed me, they said, you know, we've seen your videos, we saw what was going on, please don't plug it in again, <laughs> it's going to do it. And I was like, okay, thank you, like I appreciate that. But what they also did was, we wanna walk you through maybe some possible wires that have been corroded or damaged in the water and maybe cut them temporarily, or bypass them so that you can get this car working again. And I was like, this is unbelievably 
supportive, you know? And of course I have the community rallying behind it too, saying like, you gotta cut whatever wires you need, get that Volvo back on the road. Because apparently, not this exact issue, but this happens to these cars. So many people have gotten V70Rs and S60Rs and have kind of started to tear into what seemed to be onesie twosie repairs and discover a whole heap of repairs and give up on them and trash them because as European cars are prone to, deferred maintenance. And you, you acquire a car for $3,000 and you take it to the dealership and it needs $5,000 worth of repair. Even if it is a cool space bulb, what have you, people are still gonna be like, mm, it's not that cool. and on it goes. So I've got the Volvo community's eyes on me right now and they are urging me to keep this one alive. And I think I'm gonna do it. But this has been a lesson of throwing money at a car and having it be worse than I, I started. And maybe a lesson in taking a car that somebody else has given up on and uh, thinking that maybe maybe this time it's different for you. There's probably a reason somebody gave up on it. 